Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about how to automate an earthquake simulation in working model 2D. And the way this tutorial works is by doing a case study where we're going to investigate how does block height affect its maximum rocking response or angle in degrees during a seismic excitation. So our approach to that case study is we're going to use three earthquakes with peak ground, peak ground accelerations or PGAs that are scaled to 0.5 G and then we're going to use three blocks all of them have a width of 1 M and their height values are 3, 4, and 5 meters so we have three blocks and three earthquakes and we should expect a total number of 9 simulations and doing this manually can be time consuming which is why we're going to automate it so before we move on, let's talk about some program relevant equations. So the first is the total number of frames that must be simulated for a specific earthquake is equal to the total time of the earthquake divided by its time step. And then the, and then the scaling factor, it depends on what your research is about. But since we want to scale our PGAs to 0.5G, the scaling factor is this equation. The PGA that you want, which is 0.5G, divided by, by the uh, initial PGA or the PGA of the earthquake. And since uh, we want our acceleration values to be in meters per second squared, we will also add a conversion factor to our scaling factor, but we will discuss that later. And another thing about working model 2D is for dimension changes. The change in dimension is relative to the geometric center of the object. And the location of the block is also the location of its geometric center. As such, the actual location of the base of the block which is situated at x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0 is actually y actual is equal to negative half of the height of the block. And it depends on like the context of where you want your block to be. But for our case, we want our block, our, uh, our the y value or the y position of the block to be specifically at 0. So that we don't have to deal with extra uh, extra posi positioning adjustments. So here are the extra equations that you may also implement when you're doing a dimension-based automation simulation. So if you want our top of the block to be at a certain value, y is equal to c, then the equation would be y adjusted is equal to c minus half of its height. Basically, you just put your uh, desired position or y position and you subtract half of its height. On the other hand, if you want the bottom of the, bottom of the block to be at y is equal to c, then the equation would be its, uh, its, desired, its desired position or y position added by one half of its height. So first things first, let's convert our earthquake data into a usable format for a working model. So we're gonna have two files for each earthquake. One file contains the acceleration and the other file contains the PGA, the time step, and the total time of the earthquake. So uh, get your notepad and for earthquake one, let's copy the entire acceleration column, save it. And then uh, for our demonstration purposes, let's call this EQ1 underscore Axel. Okay, let's make a new notepad. And now we're going to save these three earthquake properties, PGA, time step, and time. And remember the order of your properties. Right. So, remember that the first line is the PGA, the second line is the time step, and the third line is time. I'm going to say that. And let's call this file EQ1 properties or prop. And let's do the same for uh, the other earthquakes. So, earthquake 2, 
copy the entire acceleration column. Look. EQ2 underscore Axel. You can you file. Copy everything. EQ2 underscore prop. You can you notepad. EQ3 copy all the acceleration. EQT underscore Axel. And then EQT underscore prop. Okay, so let's now go into working model 2D. So here we are in working model and before we do anything else, save your current model. In the same trajectory as your earthquake data files okay so the first thing you do is to make the ground um, I like this ground to have a height of 1 meter and the width of 20 okay and then next we set our X and Y position of the ground to 0 and recall that the location of the block is relative to its geometric center. So, the top of this block is not at exactly zero. And to adjust that, all we have to do is to subtract half of the block height. Alright, so minus, and then look at your properties. This ground is noted as body 1. So, minus body brackets 1 dot and then to indicate the height, we just type height. Okay, so, oh, before, I forgot to put the 0 0.5 times, 0 0.5 times the body height. Okay, there we go. So now the top of this block is at zero. Okay. And then let's call this, uh, let's call this rectangle as ground. This will be useful later when we're going to code our script. Okay, and then we're going to put a kids dot joint, and uh, this is just a process of making a shake table. So we have this joint here, and then we're going to put an actuator. Please start at your joint. And then put the endpoint anywhere along the joint line. Oh, I have no idea which is called actually, but anywhere along this line. Okay, we have your actuator now. Okay, and then we're we are going to define this actuator using controls. So defi define define uh, a pressure actuator. Like define new control and then acceleration and then uh don't mind this yet just put this at text box and i don't know why but uh, in order to prevent any like issues with your data just set your minimum to like a really really low value so i'm gonna put to negative 1000 or 10,000. And I'm going to put my maximum value to 10,000. Uh, it's just my convention. I don't know if this will affect anything, but uh, just uh, just to be safe. Okay. And then we're going to call this, uh, for that, go to your window and the geometry uh, appearance. We're going to call this EQ. This is where we will feed our earthquake data files later. And then we're going to define another generic control. All right, make it a text box. Make it make the minimum a uh, really really low value, and maximum value of also a high value. And we're gonna name this as wait appearance. We're going to name this as scaling factor. So you go back to your actuator and 
we're going to multiply our scaling factor to our uh, earthquake data. So earthquake data is input 8, it's already here. And we're going to multiply that by the scaling factor, which is input 9. So multiplied to input bracket 9. Okay. So we kind of got our shake table uh, ready. All that's left is to put the block. So I'm going to put here a block. Uh, we don't care its dimensions yet. We're going to change it in the properties. Oh, properties geometry. So we, our width, we defined it to be 1. And our height, we defined it to be 3, 4, 5. But first, let's make it 3. Okay. And then put the x and y values to 0. And remember again that we want this base of the block to be at zero. And to do that, we just have to add half of that block height. So add 0 0.5 multiplied to its height. So this block is noted as body 10. So body 10 dot height. And now it's base it is at zero zero okay and let's change it name let's call this uh block okay oh uh, before anything else let's add the yeah uh, let's add some parameters i want to make this block have a mass of 50 kilograms static fission of one Kinetic fiction of one. Is there anything else that I've missed? I don't think so. Okay. For exporting the data, uh, we want uh, our case study wants us to determine the maximum rocking response. So we, I don't. Uh, at this, for this specific case, we don't really care about its sliding displacement. So all we have to worry about is the rotation graph. Right. So here's uh, its rotation graph, and I'm gonna call this output data. Then x as time. I also want to change this meter graph name into results. Oh, uh, some other things that we have to change uh, preferences. This uh, checkbox here, prevent model from running faster than real time. Check that off. Uh, the reason why we check that off is this will only make your model run at real time. And for example, you have an earthquake that's like 100 seconds. Uh, that's gonna take a long time. If you uncheck this, this your simulation is going to run faster. Right? And then edit. Oh, let me check. Where's the numbers in units? Oh, here it is. Numbers in units. I want this to be in degrees. Okay. So, our uh, it's like our model is kind of already finished, and now let's move on to the coding part. So now we are going to code our automation script. And before that, I would just like to emphasize that you browse to the user manual for working model 2D. Uh, this contains any all of the functions that you need in making your uh, working model scripts. Uh, I think this is like available as a PDF during a quick research on Google. Okay, so. To access your script editor, go to script and then go to editor. Right? And before we write anything else, we have uh not, not really we have to but as a convention, let's save our script file. Oh. I'll save your script save your script file into the same directory as all of your other files. And then for this one, I'm gonna call it as automated EQ sim script. Okay. 
So the first thing we do is to call uh, is to call a working model document called doc. So dim doc dim is just a way of saying that we're calling these variables as something, and this something is the working model wm document. Right, and we want to set this doc into the one that we are currently using right now, the one that is open. And the way that we call that is by doing this function wm dit dot active document. And as a rule of thumb, we put here doc that we set just in case that there may be other simulation that have already run and we don't want our data to be messy. And then we're going to call. Uh, we're going to call on other variables using dim. So dim. Uh, no, we want we want to define our number of earthquakes as a as a double. And then we want to dim our time step as double. Dim our earthquake time as double. Our PGA as well. PGA as double and then for our scaling factor uh, since uh, my the data that I use is in G's I want to convert that into meters per second squared so I'm gonna have to put a conversion factor to that I'm gonna put here G convert for uh, for your specific purposes I don't think that you really need this but uh, just in case that you're uh, that your earthquake data is in another format, you can set a certain variable like, oops, you can you can set a certain variable so double like con call it just convert or something. So my, for my specific case, I'm gonna call it g convert conversion from g to meters per second squared, and then dim. Uh, I also have my uh, desired PGA. So I'll call that PGA desired. Okay. And now we're going to call on our like the block and then the output graph using the working model input and output dim. So first of all, scaling factor, dim scaling factor as WM input. This is the scaling factor. Dim Earthquake, this is our earthquake as WM input. Dim rotation, this is our output rotation graph. Dim rotation as WM output. And then dim, dim, and then block. Block, which is uh, the block that we want to observe. Dim block as WM body, since it's, it is a body. Okay, and now let's uh, let's define our relevant variables. So we have three earthquakes. So num eq is equal to three. And then for me, my conversion factor from g or gravi gravitational acceleration to meters per second squared is nine point eight zero six six five g convert to 9.80665 this may not be necessary for you so uh, it, dep it depends on whether you want to put this or not and then pga desired is 0.5g and then we're going to set our input output and body object so set block as doc dot body and then whatever is inside here should be the name that you gave your block. So we named this block as well, block. So we're going to call in block. Okay. And then set scaling factor as a doc dot input. And then we call the scaling factor as scaling factor. So which is convenient. Scaling factor. We do the same for rotation, set rotation is equal to doc.output since it is an output. 
and then we call that results and then set EQ or the earthquake here as doc dot input EQ and then uh, some working model data input things this EQ here in order to make in order to feed your earthquake data into it we have to format it into what is known as a table or a data table and then we didn't we don't need to put our time here because we already have a time step so our eq dot time column is equal to zero making it zero just means that you don't need time in your data table the thing that dictates your time is your time step so your eq dot data column is then one Okay, so now we are going to make a for loop that I trace over all earthquakes. Okay. So for, uh, let's say our current earthquake variable is cur eq is equal to 1 until or to num eq. And then, at, and then in order to approach num eq from 1, we step by 1. And then to go next, we type here next cur eq. Okay. So uh, another rule of thumb again. Uh, I mean, it's, I think it's just my thing. I want to put here doc that we set again, just in case that there's still uh, remaining simulations that have not yet reset it. Okay. So the next thing we do here is. To, uh, to get the data from our uh, earthquake properties file and to do this we're gonna use the open function so open and then we're going to concatenate a string and to concatenate a string we're going to use the ampersand sign so let's say I have like uh, EQ and then ampersand uh, let's say cur eq but cur eq is equal to one actually uh, let's say this one for now this will return as eq one that's how concatenation in working model 2d works so, so we do that here so open uh, remember the format of our uh, file is eq and the earthquake number underscore prop so open print this eq ampersand cur eq ampersand underscore prop dot txt and then for input as number one now this text here or this data here is called as number one and then we are going to parse that data line by line so remember that uh, remember the rows of our data the first line is the pga the second line is the time step and the third line is time okay so we're going to parse in our first data so line input number one and the data that is parsed on the first line we're going to call that z dollar sign uh, this dollar sign is really important i don't know why but uh, it's just important <laughs> okay so the first line is your pga so pga is equal to z dollar sign right and now after this first parse we are already at the second row so we're going to get the data from the second row again line input number one z dollar sign and the second row is the time step right. and then we're going to parse again the data line input number one z uh, dollar sign and then 
the third one is the total earthquake time or EQ time is equal to Z dollar sign. And then this is uh, really important. We have to close this file so that the next iteration you can open a new file as number one. Okay, so now we have our earthquake properties. The next is to feed our earthquake acceleration data into this uh, generic control. So to do that, we're going to use EQ that read table, and then we're going to con we're going to concatenate strings again. So remember our format EQ, and then the earthquake number underscore axel so eq ampersand the earthquake number or the current earthquake ampersand underscore axel that text okay so basically we have everything we need here in the data feed the next is some uh, equation stuff so we have a scaling factor here that we defined previously as set scaling factor is equal to input and we want to change its value into uh, whatever we desire for me it is this one pga desired times a uh, pga desired over pga initial so scaling factor for input uh for input objects to change its value we just put that value is equal to whatever value we want so pga desired over the pga that was parsed right. and then uh, since i want to convert it into meters per second squared i also have to put here my conversion factor g convert Okay, so now we have our scaling factor done. We also have our total number of frames that we have to simulate. So to get the total number of frames, just divide your earthquake time by the time step. So total frame is equal to EQ time all over time step. Okay. Now we have to over over uh, we have to iterate over our block values or block height values no, actually before that we have to define our uh, integration step so to do that we have to put here doc that variable integration step uh, since we are going to define the integration step by ourselves we don't want to make it variable so we make this variable integration step false and then we want our integration step to be our time step okay now we can iterate over all our height values so as uh based on our like approach to the case study we want three values three four and five so we're going to iterate height values uh i'm gonna call it cur height so cur height from three to five with a step of one and then next curve height. Okay. Oh, sorry. And then uh, I think it's my kind of thing to put here again a doctor reset. I don't know if that will be useful at this point, but for me, uh, it is. I think it's necessary just to be safe. So doctor reset and. We want to change our block height value to whatever curve height is. So we previously defined the block to be the body in the working model called block. So you want to change that block block height value, block that height that value into curve height. Okay, and now we can run it. Dot that run. And how many frames that we will run is the total frame. So, total frame. Okay. And now we are going to export 
or data. So the start frame for export is zero. So doc dot export start frame go to zero, and then our stop frame or the end frame that we will export is the total number of frames. So doc dot stop frame let's go to total frame. Is there anything else that we left out here? Hmm. Little frame. Okay, nothing else. And then to export this, uh, I want it to be in this format. Uh, EQ and then EQ number underscore cur height. And then the DTA. Okay. So doc that to export that we use the doc that export meter data as EQ and then the current uh, current earthquake number ampersand put on underscore and then the cur height. And then don't forget to put the extension, which is that DTA for working model 2D. Okay. And then that's basically our script file. Oh, uh, I would just like to note that before we run this, that I have a typo in my value, so. Uh, Let's remove an extra A there, it should be this one A. Okay. And now let's run our script file. So our uh, our simulation must be running automatically and it should also export automatically. And to check if your code works after this specific simulation, you should see an exported data file. So there we go. Let's look at our data file and see if it's exported correctly. And yes, it's exported correctly. So I think I'll fast forward this one since this may take quite a while. So see you later. Okay, so the simulation is done. And to double check whether our, uh, whether our code work correctly. We should have nine files here for a quick one, three, four, five, three, four, five, and three, four, five. So our simulation is done. And at this point, uh, at this point, we're kind of finished already, but uh, I want to add some additional tutorial on how to use MATLAB to process these uh, data files. So here we are in our uh, MATLAB program and first let's make a data processing script. I'll just call this data processing. Okay. So as a common rule tab, we want to put your close all to close all the figures and clear and then uh, clear out the common window. Okay, so the first portion of our processing code is to uh, retrieve our data so data retrieval okay so let's put up uh, some relevant variables so we have the earthquake so num eq is equal to 3 and then we have three height values 3 4 5 but to make it convenient for like if you're doing uh, or if you have lots of parameters let's make it's more convenient to make it as an array. So from 3 to 5, but the step is 1. So we expect our height array to be 3, 4, and 5. Okay. And then uh, for table purposes, I'm going to set here a variable called column index. Okay. So uh, this column index is for the table later. Uh, 
and now we are going to iterate uh, all of our height values so for height index is equal to 1 until the length of your height matrix and then we want to uh, we want to name our top rows or header rows based on our uh, height values okay so table and then one we see the face the first row and then column index is equal to we're, go we're going to concat in strings again but in MATLAB this is called str cut so I want our header our, our header row to look something like this so for example three meters so y is equal to actually not y h is equal to three meters so to do that I'm going to concatenate the string so h is equal to put a space there and then our height at the current index so height at your current height index and we have to convert this into a string since we're concatenating strings and then uh, put here oh I think I put an extra for this there and then M and then we have to add our column index by one index is equal to column index plus one okay let's run this code so our table should have three columns h is equal to three meters four and then five okay and in between those rows we're going to iterate over all our earthquakes so for cur eq is equal to one until number of earthquakes and and now we are going to import our data from this dta file so for our current earthquake and height we're gonna have our current dta file that we're going to import so current dta is equal to import data and then the file name and since we are uh, we, we are automating our data processing we're going to uh, string concatenate so string concatenate and then first is eq so eq comma and then the number of our earthquake so string and of cur eq comma and then we have an underscore comma and we have our uh, print height so string height of height index okay. and then don't forget to put the uh, extension so that DTA so this will import a the, the data file for the current earthquake and the current height and our current data actually i'm gonna show it to you import data so let's say current earthquake is one and then your current height is three you're gonna have uh, three fields but the thing that we are most concerned about is this uh, data and remember that your uh, that your response column or data column is at the second column so for that let's uh, let's get our data from this uh, from this curry data stock so our quick results this is basically our data response is equal to curry dta dot data to get this uh, data column and you now extracted your uh, you have now extracted your data already and this it depends on what kind of like 
what kind of parameter that you're trying to investigate but for me i want to find the absolute maximum of my data so before that i want to make a function so i'm gonna call this function max absolute actually i don't know if matlab has this function already but i'm gonna write this here so max abs so max abs is equal to the maximum of the absolute of whatever we put in that function okay so basically uh, so basically that the parameter that i want from this data column is the maximum absolute of the second column results all rows of the second column and i'm gonna put this in my table and uh, i want my table to start with the header row and then the following tables will be the results from at uh, the following tables the following rows to be the result from each earthquake and since uh and since the first uh, the first row is already used as the header row the cur eq or the data result must start from two and since cur eq starts from one to start at the second row just add the one to your row index so cur eq plus one and then column index uh, i don't know if there is any more efficient way to do this but uh, uh, this is my uh, type of coding like this is the way that i code okay and then let's end this for loop wait why is there another end here oops and end okay and when i run this code i should have my results here already so table okay and now we can the kind of hover results already and we can see here that as your height increases then its maximum uh, rocking angle uh, increases as well when subjected under the quick which kind of makes sense since the things that tend to like topple are those tall and slender things okay and at this point uh our data retrieval is already done but to like visualize it let's make a plot uh, actually the tutorial ends at this point but to make like a matlab plot out of this where you're looking at the maximum rocking angle for each height and for each earthquake i'm gonna use matlab's plot function for that so first i want to make another table where the table is basically just the uh, the reverse of this matrix or table so basically instead of this being the header row i want my header row to be the current earthquake so for cur eq is equal to one until num eq and actually i'll, I'll just copy this and then for height index and and I'm just gonna invert the table so eq table and then height index and then cur eq i will not bother anymore with the header row at this point since i already know that my current eq starts from one until uh, until the number of earthquakes that i have so cur eq is equal to table cur eq plus one then height index we just we basically just reverting the rows and the columns and i want to make this into a double since our table is in string now we should have a matrix And now let's plot this matrix so plot okay figure one and i want to overlay the plot so i use hold on and then plot and then height 
EQ table over for the first column and I want this line to have a marker of like circles for the second one height EQ table uh, also for the second column and I want this to have mark of X and then but height EQ table third column and I want the markers oh, oops. I want these markers to have an asterisk on it and then for the legend it started from EQ1 until EQ3 so EQ1 EQ2 and EQ3 and for reasons of uh, like since when we plot this we're going to have uh, the, uh, we're going to have floating point values for height of okay, this one is the first see we, we have height values that are like decimals to remove that and like, to have your x values only within this uh, no, only within this matrix we're going to use x sticks and then height so there you go it only shows you the values in that height matrix okay some additional things are x label height in meters y label maximum rocking angle in degrees and then after we plot this this should be done okay so we can see kind of a general pattern over here for for all earthquakes as your block height increases then your maximum rocking angles is expected to uh, increase as well and yeah that answers our uh, case study and i think that's all for now thank you and good luck